Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the brand new version of Lightroom that's just been released and that is Lightroom Classic 13.3 which brings a couple of key new features as well as the usual round of bug fixes and camera support and one of those new features I think you're going to really like so let's dive right in. First up, Lens Blur gets a new AI model. So there's some tweaks to the user interface as well. So just to quickly show you the updates to Lens Blur, they have tweaked the interface a little bit. Um, if you look here at the focus range histogram, you will see that it is no longer in color. And we also now have the labels near and far on either side. And they've also kind of just kind of tweaked the overall interface a little bit. So we've got new icons for focusing on people and for selecting the area to focus on. But of course, the main kind of big part of the lens blur update is the new AI model, which should give you better results. Um, at least that's what they claim. I haven't noticed a huge amount of difference, but then I haven't really done a huge amount of testing on this either. Um, and that's basically what's new in the blur tool. Next up, Denoise has been updated on the Mac, so it now uses Apple's Neural Engine, um, but you need to be using macOS 14 for this. What I'm using here right now is my Mac Studio, and uh, I don't have macOS 14 running on this, um, but I tried it earlier on my laptop over here, and uh, I ran some tests. So first up, I took five Sony ARW files, uh, or Sony RAW files, basically, um, and I ran Denoise with Denoise set to 50%, so on the previous version, Lightroom 13.2, it took on average three minutes and 40 seconds. And on the new version, which uses the neural engine, so in 13.3, the same test took one minute and 30 seconds, which is a, a pretty significant speed boost. So I, w <laughs> I was thinking that that's too good to be true. So I ran another set of tests. This time I took some Fuji files. So I took six Fuji files. And on 13.2, so the previous version, it took an average of five minutes and 10 seconds. And with the neural engine in 13.3, it only took one minute and 52 seconds, which again is a big improvement. Now, it's really important to point out here that your mileage is, may vary greatly depending on the system you're using. So on my old laptop over here, um, <laughs> it, it was it's an M1 MacBook Pro, so kind of the first generation. And, the, the GPU and that's not great. So Denoise was quite slow on that compared to my Mac Studio. So the speed up with the neural engine, you may not see as much of a speed up on newer systems which have better GPUs in the first place. Uh, I've talked to some other people and they're getting an average 25 to 30% speed uh, increase um, with this new version. Okay, so the big feature of this release is generative remove. And this is basically the same thing as generative fill in Photoshop, but you can now do it uh, directly within Lightroom. And this is for removing objects from a scene and it uses Adobe's Firefly AI engine. So if you've used generative fill in Photoshop to remove objects from a scene, which in my opinion is actually the best use of generative fill in Photoshop, then this is basically the same thing. So let's take a look at how it works in Lightroom. So I am in Lightroom here, and here is a picture of a beach. And so let's say, for example, we want to get rid of these uh, footsteps. Now, I'm just doing this as an example. I'm not saying that I would want to get rid of the footsteps. In fact, they're actually quite a nice feature of this image. But again, just to show you how this works, let's pop over to the Erase tool, or the Remove tool, sorry. I keep calling it Erase, but Adobe officially calls it Remove, but anyway. So if we pop over to the remove tool and the first mode here, you will see um, it will, I think it defaults to generative AI. I've been trying this now, so I'm, I can't remember what the default actually is. Um, but if you turn generative AI on, it will use the Adobe's Firefly AI to generate content. Um, object aware, I'm gonna turn this off for the moment. Um, I'll explain that better in the next example. So all you have to do is, uh, let's just draw over our objects that you want to erase. Um, if you're not familiar with uh, generative fill, uh, one quick tip for you is always work in small objects. And this is because it's resolution limited. So if you do kind of big chunks at a time, you will find that um, the resolution doesn't match the resolution of your image. So I'm just gonna do the two of these first. Um, and then we hit apply and it will now generate. 
Okay, so as you can see, <laughs> that's pretty much got rid of it. Um, one of the things I've noticed when trying this out is if you do kind of two separate con um, discontinuous um, areas, it will do it will treat them separately as separate objects within um, generative AI. But as with generative fill in Photoshop, you've got variations. So if you go over here to the variations and you can scroll to them, and you're not getting much difference here because of the sound. Um, and if you don't like any of them, you can just hit refresh. So. Let me quickly go through and do the rest of these. OK, so there we have it. Um, there is our footprints removed. You can toggle this on and off if you want to see before and after on this by just hitting the little eyeball icon down here. So there's before and there's after. Um, OK, so let me give you another example and we're going to this a bit more detail. Here we have this image of uh, a dandelion that's gone to seed and you know, it's a pretty good image, but we've kind of got this horrible, ugly thing here, and this is kind of throwing the composition. So again, let's see how we get on with generative AI and removing it. So I'm just going to do all this in one go. I know I said do it uh, with um, smaller chunks so as to preserve the resolution, but because this is fairly blurred anyway, it's not really going to be an issue. OK. In fact, let me just throw this all out. OK, and hit. Oh, no, we missed a bit. Hit apply. Okay, and as you can see, that's got rid of that and it has kept the stalk of the other plant in the background, which is pretty impressive. So let me just show you one more example. Um, I'm not going to do this because it'll take too long, um, but here's a kind of fairly complex one. Um, and if you look down here, we have lots of people and this is in Dumbo and it's kind of crazy going on. But if I zoom back out here and then here's one I did earlier. And as you can see, I've kind of got rid of most of the people here and the cars. Again, it's not brilliant. Um, you would need to probably do this in Photoshop. Like if I zoom in here, you can see it's all kind of a mush. But I have got rid of them. <laughs> um, again, not a brilliant example, but the fact that I was able to do all of that within Lightroom without having to move to a different application is pretty impressive. Um, and depending on what you're using it for, like if you're going to use this and then put text or something over that, that's like fine. Um, so let me just give you another quick example, and this time I'll show you how to use object aware. So we have this image here of uh, these kind of three posts. This was on the beach in Brighton. And we have this kind of ugly thing over here that's kind of throwing the composition. Now, I could just crop this, but let's see if we can remove it. OK, and this time I'm going to use object aware. Um, object aware basically selects the object. It uses the same kind of uh, AI based object detection that Photoshop uses. and Basically, what you do is you draw over it first, and then it, it will refine the selection. So let me just see how this goes. Um, it's a bit hit and miss, I'll be honest. Uh, the other thing about this is as well is you don't have to use this with generative AI. You can uh, turn this off, and it will still use it with the old content aware mode. OK, so as you can see, that's kind of refined a bit around it, and it's kind of given you um, it gives you borders as well, just so it knows it has enough to remove. So I'm going to hit apply. And there we have it, and it is gone, and our composition looks a lot better. So if I do before and after. Um, so that's pretty much it. That is a generative remove within um, Lightroom. And Lightroom 13.3, Lightroom Classic 13.3. Uh, you will. This is also in um, Lightroom Desktop, and I believe it may be in some of the in the mobile versions as well. Um, and that's kind of the main features of Lightroom 13.3. Uh, as I said, there's a few other kind of under the hood things. There's new camera support, and there's some bug fixes. They've updated the sync engine, so to improve syncing with Lightroom in the cloud, and they've improved the performance um, of the develop module for when you're paging through images. So, so these updates should be available now, and all you need to do is go to the Adobe application, and just go so go to the apps and then go view updates okay so that is pretty much everything um i hope you have found this video useful if you do please like share and subscribe and um don't forget to check some of my other videos and we'll see you next time bye